All right, this video, um, I want to help you out, my brother. Uh, forgive me if I'm saying your name wrong, but I think it's uh, Levo Gang Siabi. But look, I want to help you out because you believe in the Son of God just like I do. However, we still um, believe it differently. You stated that there is one God, and I agree. There is one God. Now, so you say that God is manifesting himself as the Son. And so Jesus Christ is that one true God. Well, the scripture proved that statement to be false. Because even when I go over here to 1 Corinthians chapter um, 8, and I read verse 6, it says, But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things and we by him. So I can go to Jesus in the book of John chapter 17 and, and this is how he prays to the Father. Listen to this. He says in verse 3, and this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Do you not understand brother that um, Jesus Christ is the word of God? Do you not understand that God's word is his son? So you try to say they're not two separate gods. Yeah, the father and I are one. I agree with that because Jesus, his word came out from the bosom of the father. But you keep forgetting that God gave his word, his own life. Let me read it to you in John chapter 5, and then I want to, we're going to talk about the right hand of God. Now, John chapter 5 at um, verse 26, for as the father had life in himself, so had he given to the son to have life in himself and had given him authority to execute judgment. So the point I'm making is that um, this is the son talking. He's telling you just like the father has life in himself, he's given the son to have life in himself. Now, I want to talk about this right hand of God because I, I told you, I showed, I said, I asked you about the right hand of God and you just told me that that's the same true God. So let me ask you this. If the one true God is God Almighty, the father, why does the scripture say, his son is at his right hand. So I asked you about that. And you were saying I'm looking at it from a, a human mind. <laughs> but check this out, brother. The people that was inspired by the Holy Ghost, they wrote the Bible. They wrote it. So now, Let's go first to understand what is the right, what is this right hand of God? What does this mean? So let's go to, I'm going to go to um, Exodus 15, verse 6. It says, Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. So we see that the right hand of God is power. All right? Now, so since the right hand of God is power, and the Son of God, Jesus Christ, you know he died, he rose again, right? Now, Matthew 28, at verse 18, once Jesus rose from the dead, before he left, he said in verse 18, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So, Jesus is in the power of God. Right. And that's how... He is at the right hand of God. Now, follow me to Acts chapter 2. I'm just, I, I want to give you the witness accounts. Notice I said the witness of counts. I believe these men in the Bible. It don't matter about what you say revealed to you and all that. What did God give us in his word? Because this word is revelation from God. Because it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. So this is revelation. Now, Acts chapter 2, listen to verse 32, 35. This Jesus had God raised up, whereof we are 
all we are or witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father. So you say he is the Father. He, or he, he is the true God, but the true God is God the Father. So now this Jesus here, it says, having received of the Father, he received it of the Father. So if you handed me something and I say, uh, I got this from you, that's the same thing as me receiving it of you. Do you get it? So Jesus received something of the Father. The promise of the Holy Ghost. So he is by the right hand exalted. Now, that's the Apostle Peter, the witness. All right. Now, let's go over to Hebrews 1. Just follow me. I want to go to every account that says right hand of God. Because you say I'm looking at it from a human mind. Well, let me talk. To, let me see what these other humans that was inspired by the Holy Ghost got to say about it. Hebrews 1, 2 and 3. It says, uh, we're talking about God. I'm going to start at 1. God, who is sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time passing to the fathers by the prophets, had in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. By whom, um, by, I mean, who being the brightness of his glory and the expert image of his person and upholding all things, by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So this Jesus, who is his son, he sat down after purging our sins. He sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Don't forget that. He sat down on the right hand of. The majesty on high. Now let's go to Acts chapter, I mean, on Hebrews chapter 8, same book. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. So this is the sum of everything he's spoken. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Let me say that again. Who is set on the right hand of the throne of the of the majesty in high in the heavens who is the majesty that's god the father i'm going to show you even more hebrews chapter 10 verse 11 and 12 listen to this brother in every priest standeth daily ministering and offering all in offering oftentimes the same sacrifices who can never which can never take away sins but this man but this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins who offered the sacrifice for sins? Was it not the word of God who was the son of God? Was it not the son of God who was made flesh? His word that was made flesh, who we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the father, of the father, the only begotten of the father. That means that he is the one that proceeded forth and came out from God. God begot him a son, whether y'all people out here want to believe it or not. So now, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. So this man, this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, sat down on the right hand of God. Of God is of God. He sat down on the right hand of God. Let's keep talking. Colossians chapter 3. So let's see if the, I mean, let me go to Paul. I'm going to multiple people. I want to show you. So they thinking of it from a human mind then. Because you say I'm thinking of it from a human mind. Brother, we got to believe the scriptures. See, that's why I always talk about believe the scriptures. Believe as it's written. Stop going based on your own interpretation. This word of God is of no private interpretation. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. If, if ye then be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth. Now, seek these things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Well, Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Of God is of God. 
not God sitting on the right hand of himself. That's foolishness. Ephesians chapter 1. Keep following me, brother. Keep following me. We got to get this, uh, this clear. Because I don't think why, why y'all can't believe what God gave. Why can't y'all believe the scriptures as God gave it? Why it got to be this mystery? Ain't no mystery. It's been revealed already. And it's been written and given to us. God, mystery was Christ. He came. You know what? Let me continue. Ephesians chapter 1. Listen to verse uh, 20. I'm going to start 15 first. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, in love unto all the saints. Now, Paul told me how he ceased not to give thanks. Then when you drop down to verse 20, he says, uh, which he wrought in Christ. Talking about what God wrought in Christ when he raised him. When he, God the Father, raised him, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, from the dead. And set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. So God set Jesus at his own right hand. You saying that Jesus is the one true God. But the one true God set Jesus at his own right hand in heavenly places. How can you sit someone at your own right hand and that's you? Oh my goodness. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. I'm going to read verse 55 and 56. Let's go and see what Stephen saw in the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Let's see what did Stephen see. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly. Meaning he looked it up firmly, straight way into heaven he was able to see in heaven and saw the glory of God he saw the glory of God and Jesus he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God so he saw the glory of God the true God he saw his glory and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. At, um, Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 34. Listen again. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God. So the one that died and that was risen, he is at the right hand of God, who also making intercession for us. So ask yourself, if someone is making intercession for us, who is he making intercession to? He got to be making intercession for us to someone else. The Father God is not making intercession to himself for us. That makes no type of sense at all. Except the fact that God has a son. And the son is not the true God. He said himself that God the Father is the only true God. And Jesus Christ is his son who is our Lord. And he is still a God to us because he is the word of God. Let's continue. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Keep following me. Let's go to verse 69. This is Jesus talking. The one you say is the true God. The only true God. Let's see what he got to say. Hereafter. Now what? Let's start before that. Are thou the Christ? Tell us. And he said unto them, if I tell you, you would not believe. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are so right. You are right, Lord Jesus. You cannot lie, Lord Jesus. 
He said, if I tell you, ye will not believe. And if I also ask you, you will not answer me, nor let me go. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. So you got Jesus himself telling those religious leaders that if I tell you, you won't believe. You ain't going to even believe. And I'm glad Jesus said that. Because now he says, hereafter, hereafter shall the Son of Man, referring to himself, sit on the right hand of the power of God. Now he said he's going to sit down on the right hand of the power of God. So he is sitting in that power of God. First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. Keep following me, please. I got two scriptures I'm going to read, then I'm done. I didn't prove my point. First Peter chapter 3, verse 21. The like figure whereunto even baptism, baptism do also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but, and, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Who it, so by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven... And is on the right hand of God. And guess what? Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. That's the same thing that is stated in Hebrews chapter 1. Where God told his angels to worship his son. You need me to read that? Let's read it real quick. And then I'm going to read my last scripture. Let's read it. Because if you don't believe me. Let me show you what thus says the word of God. Now, verse 1, I mean, chapter 1, Hebrews 1, verse 5. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. He never said that to no angel. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bring it, and again, when he bring it in the first begotten into the world, the first begotten, when he bring him into the world, he said, and let all the angels of God worship him. So that goes with what it said in First Peter. That angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. And the last scripture I want to give you is Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. It says this. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. For who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. So we're talking about the one who endured the cross. Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So he is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So he is set down at the right hand of God's throne. So he is not the only true God. He proceeded forth and came out from God. He is the word of God made flesh. He is the only begotten of the father. Why can't y'all accept that God got a son? God got a son. In Jesus Christ is his name. Okay? Believe it. He is not the only true God, but he is the one who proceeded forth and came out from God who is the word of God, who is God's son. God got a son, whether you want him as his son or not. He is still a son of God. That's what Jesus teach. That's what all the apostles um, teach. You don't have to believe it, but I believe the witnesses in the Bible, and I believe the Lord himself, and I ain't got to add my private interpretation. I ain't got to add my private, um, my own revelation about it. No, I believe the record that God gave because he revealed it to his apostles and his apostles and Jesus himself revealed it to us. So you got to believe the scriptures. Ignore what you think you think, what you think, you know, ignore what you what you was taught. If you weren't taught this right here, what I just went to in the scriptures, then you ain't got it right. And I can say that with confidence. You ain't got it right. God got a son and he is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. And he is in the power of God. Whether y'all want him there or not, he's there.